want to thank the Reusable Packaging Association for including me. Uh, I, I see a lot of people joining. I wish they gave me more of a softball. Uh, I wish they weren't asking me to forecast a trillion dollar logistics marketplace, but here we are. Uh, there's a lot of headlines, right? Uh, a lot happening in the supply chain world. My goal today is not to uh, predict the future. If I could predict the future, I probably wouldn't be here today. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil in the marketplace. There's a lot of moving pieces. My goal is to provide a look at the past, the present, leverage data. There's a ton of great third party resources that I'm gonna call on today to hopefully shine a light as to the, the why of what happened. Uh, explain what's happening today and then you know dive into the future, which uh, another call out, certainly not an economist. There's a lot going on in, in, in the economy today uh, that has a larger impact, but I'm going to steer clear of that. And uh, by the end of this, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. We have a booth. I uh, would love to chat with each one of you individually. A little bit about myself. Uh, relatively new to the pallet world, I have 12 years experience in supply chain. I spent the first 11 years at a company called uh, Coyote Logistics. If you flew into O'Hare, you probably passed our, my old office on the left. UPS acquired Coyote in 2015, uh, and it gave me a really good uh, first look at the global supply chain. I wore a ton of different hats, my time at Coyote and my time at, at UPS freight, e-commerce, uh, a little bit of reverse logistics. I think that the challenge was, and, and to a certain extent, we, we touched uh, customers directly on the UPS side, but the challenge was, and, and the why, uh, when I had an opportunity to join PLA a year ago, is we weren't touching every part of the supply chain. You know, as a traditional 3PL, our job is to uh, leverage our technology uh, leverage the data that we're getting from our customers, from our carriers, uh, but we're not on the dock door. I think what really excited me about PLA is the ability from port to port to touch every piece of the supply chain, having 75 plus asset locations, 3,300 plus tractors and trailers, uh, 1,500 plus customers, it allows us to be really sticky. And when the supply chain world flips upside down, uh, like it did during COVID, it's really hard to be nimble if you're not, sorry about that. It's really hard to be nimble enough if you're just getting your information from a third party. On the pallet side, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about PLA, then we're gonna jump into the, the future outlook, but from a pallet side, uh, my role and, and PLA's role in, in the uh, global supply chain is offering solutions. Uh, we touched just about every aspect of uh, the, the pallet side for our customers whether you're buying uh, one trailer load of pallets every two months or looking for a really complex on-site operation, new lumber, custom crating, uh, store suite model, uh, we, we can support you. And, and we try and go into those conversations and have those uh, open dialogue with our customers to say, we want to provide a solution. We want to understand your pain point. And what's really interesting is on the SCS or supply chain services side, because we have the ability to have uh, custom and dedicated fleets, we have reverse logistics, used asset centers, uh, have on-site support and presence across the country, it allows us to get really creative in the way we do it. If we control the transportation in, we control the transportation out, we have trailers on-site at these locations, it allows us to get really creative uh, and be versatile in the way that we impact our customers. Why does that matter? Uh, it's incumbent upon PLA to be data obsessed. Uh, we have all these touch points, all these customers, all of this information flowing into us. It's on us to forecast that, right? We'd be really bad at what we do uh, if we weren't able to, at some uh, point, with some sense of relative certainty, say this is what we expect to happen uh, in the supply chain. So uh, I think it's really important to understand on the pallet side, the pallet is really uh, the first and the last piece of the supply chain. If inventory levels are up, uh, if there's a lot of consumption taking place, we have visibility to that uh, before anyone else.
So what drives these markets? I think there's been a couple themes of the last, uh, the last couple of years, uh, pre-COVID and then obviously during COVID. The first is the just-in-time, uh, I call it the Amazon effect, right? Uh, and I don't think I need to explain to anyone what the Amazon effect is, but uh, the reality behind it is everyone expects something at their front door, uh, quick, cheap. Uh, if they don't like it, they want to throw it in the mailbox and send it back, or they want the ability to go to a retail store like a Kohl's and, and return it. The challenge there and, and what happened during uh, the pandemic is uh, Amazon's really good at forecasting. They're really good at running their advanced algorithms to say, this is what we forecast a consumer in a location is going to buy. And when they have that information, um, they have thousands, if not millions of SKUs, uh, and then the supply and the demand curve is, is flipped upside down, what you're left is, is a bunch of consumers that uh, aren't getting what they want when they want it. So what you had is a transition to the post-COVID just-in-case supply chain. It's uh, less SKUs, uh, reshoring, bringing a lot of our production, manufacturing, distribution back to the U.S., uh, diversifying your supplier base, making sure, you, making sure you have redundancy plans in place. I think the reality and what we started to see is disruption is expensive. Uh, yes, it's expensive to have more inventory on hand. Yes, it's expensive to, to reshore. But what's more expensive is letting your customers down uh, and, and not having the ability to um, perform when, when times are, are critical, which was uh, what we experienced the last two years. I touched on it at the beginning, certainly not an economist, but uh, it, it's really important to, to bring up some of those high level buzzwords that we see in the media every single day. Uh, the reality is uh, there is an impact with interest rates and inflation. Uh, there is an, an impact on consumption. The, the early feedback and, and just a high level inflation impacts interest rates, uh, that impacts consumer borrowing, which impacts consumption industrial production, that all drives the, the supply and demand of the transportation and the pallet market. The early feedback and where there's a positive, and, and I don't want to uh, look into the future too much on this, but consumption has been resilient. You know, the, the demand for uh, CPG has been high. Um, we haven't seen a, a downtick yet. Um, who knows uh, what we'll see post Q4, post peak season, uh, but so far the returns are, are positive. So when you combine all of that, uh, the shift to just in case, reshoring, the e-commerce boom, micro fulfillment, resilient consumption, what you're left is uh, or left with is, is a pretty solid um, supply that, that we have today. Uh, there's more demand than there's ever been. Uh, we have inventory stacking with uh, a lot of these uh, large corporations making sure they're not letting down their consumers as we enter Q4, a very critical time in their supply chain. And we feel good about uh, where we are today. And I'll talk a little bit more in a few slides about the future state. As far as uh, lumber, uh, another buzzword, another thing, and probably the, the most important thing uh, that, that, or the most regular conversation I'm having with my customers when we're, we're getting on the line, hey, Zach, uh, lumber's coming down. What's the impact? Does that mean I'm gonna get some sort of rebate on my, on my pallet pricing? What I will say to that is I don't anticipate uh, the volatility of the lumber market um, maintaining what it has the last couple of years. Now, um, could it? Uh, it's been more volatile than it's ever been, uh, absolutely. But I think what you started to see as lumber prices increased, a shift from uh, new to recycled goods, uh, and, and the reality behind the lumber and its impact, sustainability, all these initiatives is in the pallet market, 90% of total pallets are recycled. Uh, is there an impact? Absolutely. Uh, I could probably talk uh, for, for a much longer period of time about this, but uh, the reality is we see this settling down, um, knock on wood, I, I hope, or knock on lumber, I should say, maybe. Uh, we, we hope this isn't a, a continued impact, but um, we feel good about where we are in, in the future state there. Uh, Transportation-wise, like I said, I, I came from a transportation background. Chris Pickett, uh, he was a chief strategy officer at Coyote while I was there. He's now the chief strategy officer at Flock Freight. Uh, he founded Pickett Research LLC, and he created what is called the Pickett Line. Now, there's probably a million different data points. Chris could probably be up here and, and speak to this for three or, three or four hours. Uh, the reality of the transportation market, and it, it works a little different than, than the pallet market, is it cyclical? 
right? You, there's a ton of noise, uh, geopolitical uncertainty, supply and demand. Um, it could be a weather event. It could be COVID-19. The reality behind the picket line and what he hopes to uh, get out to, to those reading his publication is the transportation is cyclical. It moves in around a three-year cycle. Uh, there's always going to be noise. If you can zoom out and better understand the reality of what's happening, uh, there is, to a certain extent, a driver shortage. But the, the reality is when times are good, drivers enter the market. Too many drivers enter the market. And ultimately, you get to the point where things start trending down. When costs go down, drivers exit the market. And you're left with this recurring uh, cycle, and, and we'll talk more about future state, where to a certain level, um, to a certain extent, I can predict what's going to happen in the transportation market. There's always going to be outside variables. There's always going to be impacts there. But to a certain extent, you can say this is what we believe will be happening in the future. So when you look at the, uh, the outlook on pallets, I don't think I need to explain to anyone that we anticipate the e-commerce world will continue to grow. Uh, an interesting stat that I saw uh, in South Korea, e-commerce penetration is at 35%. Right now, we're hovering around 18 to 20%, meaning there's significant growth potential in the e-commerce space. The more e-commerce you have, the more micro-fulfillment, the more distribution points, the more pallets, the more transportation, so on and so forth. So that's a, a really good sign there. Uh, and the pallet market in general, right now, it's around $25 billion. Uh, We have a third-party study that shows in the next five years that will... Uh, expand to, to 30 billion. So uh, we have every reason to believe that that will continue to grow and, and we feel good about the future outlook of the pallet space. So what does that mean? Uh, I, I was watching uh, TV the other day and the Walmart CEO came on and uh, the talking point, and, and hopefully us as consumers can take advantage of it, the talking point is uh, American stores have too much of the wrong stuff, uh, whether it was uh, port congestion or delays in manufacturing or uh, their forecasting being off. We have a lot of retailers right now that just have too much of the wrong inventory. At some point, uh, that will flush. Like I said, as consumers, we can probably all take advantage of uh, a couple Black Fridays this year. Uh, and when that does flush, there's going to be ample supply uh, for those looking to buy pallets into the new year. Uh, the other call out CPG and other necessities, uh, which makes up the majority of the pallet market, is it, remaining stable. We feel good about that. Uh, so compared to the tumultuous times of the past few years, we feel good about the, the supply outlook um, moving forward. From a transportation standpoint, I touched on this chart already. Uh, we are reaching the deflationary trough. If you are thinking or considering uh, going out to bid and, and locking in your transportation, now is probably a good time. Uh, I'll, I'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but we're nearing that deflationary inflection point. We expect equilibrium sometime in the first half of 2023. So you're gonna reach the bottom, it'll trend back up, and then we'll be in an inflationary environment through the remainder of 2023. Uh, the picket line, which uh, I referenced already, uh, is published monthly. He updates those numbers, he updates the forecasts. Uh, like I said, comparing pallets and transportation is certainly something that you can uh, predict a little bit more than, than the pallet side. So navigating the market, uh, what can be done to uh, make it through times of uncertainty? I think it's really important to, to look uh, into the past and say what went wrong, uh, what are the, what's the why behind it. Uh, leverage experts in areas of weakness. We'd, we'd love to chat with you. We'd love to look into your supply chain and, and see how we can help improve that. Uh, create updated forecasts. We've talked to a lot of shippers that say, hey, you know, we're shipping X amount of goods into restaurants. Well, that stopped. Then we shifted over uh, into grocery. Uh, understand what, what's changed. Why has that changed? What's the, the outlook uh, 2023 and beyond? Because when you're buying transportation, you're buying pallets, forecasts are, are really, really important so that you can get the most accurate costs um, possible. Uh, review your supplier base. Certainly in the transportation world, I saw it time and time again. You would uh, help someone out. Uh, times were tough. Uh, that, that competitor of yours that maybe dropped the ball when, when times were tough came in and offered five cents a mile cheaper. Don't go back to them. Uh, make sure that you have reliable partners. Uh, diversify, invest, and be transparent in those that 
are providing a, a great service for you. Uh, be confident in that. Uh, and be transparent in your goals. I think it's really important. A lot of times we're too sheltered, or customers are too sheltered in sharing their, their information. We're here to help you. We wanna provide a solution that's going to support your supply chain. Uh, and it's really important that in order to do so, we have uh, the, the information at our disposal to make the, the best recommended go forward strategy. Uh, we have a booth, uh, booth 6858. It's right over there. Would love to chat with you. I'm here the next couple of days. Uh, and I'm happy, I don't know how we're doing on timing, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if, if anyone has anything. Thank you so much.